ride and roll. Pat Conti is a common man with an uncommon passion Says for music. Not just any music. Pat likes the kind most people have either forgotten about or never heard in the first place. The thrust of my interest is primarily before World War II. That's a magical kind of era from the 1920s and 1930s. Drop down, baby, just love, showers and rain. I eat to hear my fair brown call my name. He is not a professional musician. His guitar cost him $15 at a flea market. Pat's studio is a slightly battered Ford Crown Victoria. His car is where he retreats on lunch break from his real job as a postal worker. For 20 years, Pat has worked as a mail handler, loading and unloading mail trucks. It's nonstop work, and it's something I like. The day passes quick if you're concentrated on the work, and it frees my mind to think about the more creative things, the dreamy things. Pat doesn't mind the work because it is the more creative things, the dreamy things that he lives for. You see, Pat Conti has a secret. Even his co-workers aren't aware that Pat has turned his passion into something remarkable. He's put together his own personal museum of music, a secret museum. And it's hidden here on a typical suburban street somewhere on Long Island. A street coincidentally named Harmony Drive. So this is the this is the site of the uh, of the museum. Well, this is it. This is just the vestibule. So you can leave a donation on the uh, end table. In fact, you don't. You, don't you have to pass that. through the living room and kitchen of his mother's house to get there. But it's worth the trip. This is the secret museum. Well, it used to be a secret, but uh, it's still a museum. Just watch a step here a little bit as we. My goodness. <laughs> Get past the vintage dehumidifier. Oh, you're going to have to tell me what some of these oh, things yeah, are. Oh, yeah, yeah. Look at all these different... Pat's basement looks like a one-man Smithsonian exhibit. He has collected hundreds of exotic instruments from around the world. This one is from Damascus. It's the predecessor to the lute. Al-Oud is the Egyptian word for it. Here's a cute banjo made out of a cigar box. <laughs> and it works. Photos and artifacts of musicians from other cultures. Unlike other museums, visitors are encouraged well, to touch. Th this is a very unusual uh, instrument from the turn of the century, the dulciola. It's actually half a piano and half a zither. <laughs> well, you're, you're one of about 20 people who have played the dulciola. <laughs> yeah. There's something fascinating in every corner but the heart and soul of the museum are the records. I've categorized them as best I could. This is all African and Asian section. This is the Middle East, the Levant, and there's everything here from uh, the very earliest recordings from places like Bahrain and uh, Palestine. Pat has acquired more than 10,000 rare and unusual recordings from the most remote corners of the world. Everything from Macedonian string music to Mongolian throat music. Two voices from one throat. It's the same note, but... but one wait. fundamental note, one harmonic. Way above it. Diaphonic? If we call Diaphonic it. singing. He started collecting ethnic records in his teens after his grandmother gave him a recording of Italian folk music. Though he could not understand the words, Pat was hooked on traditional music. Would you describe yourself as a musicologist? I, I would say an amateur musicologist, sure. Uh, I'm not trained in that at all, but. Uh, but my heart is there, yeah. He found the perfect name for his collection when he came across a book in a used bookstore. The Secret Museum of Mankind. That does have a kind of a ring to it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, sure it does. Over here his taste in music is eclectic, but Pat can, can find something for everyone. And, and this is a record that was made in the uh, 
the 1930s. And it comes from South Africa. These are Zulu musicians. And the performer is called Solomon Linda and his Evening Songbirds. And this is a song you know. It's called Imbube, the Zulu word for lion. <laughs> And that's the lion yeah, that we all the know. The lion sleeps tonight. Exactly. It's not a museum in the traditional sense, and it's not open to the public. And that is where Richard Nevins comes in. We hit it off right away because we had the same kind of orientation towards the records and the music, which was, wow. Richard Nevins is a record producer who met Pat through a close-knit circle of collectors. His company, Yazoo Records, had been putting out traditional American music for years. We said, well, gosh, we should do the same thing for ethnic music from around the world from the 1920s and 30s and share that with people the same way we'd been sharing the American stuff. And that's how it came about. What came about is this, a five-CD collection of the Secret Museum's greatest hits. Hey, Peter. Yeah. I'm going to take a look on the porch. All right. All right. Yeah. Pat still scours thrift shops and flea markets an archaeologist digging for gold. The platter itself, the, the actual item, is a window. It's the window pane. On the other side is, you know, another time and place. It's been impressed on, in these grooves. And for most of its life, it just remains silent on a shelf or in a garbage can or in an attic somewhere. Once the needle drops again, the time window is opened up again and you're able to peer in. A window to the past opened thanks to Pat Conti, a common man with an uncommon passion for music 